So in this video, we're just going to cover the switch, the true false switch and the slider in WatchKit. So first up, I'm just going to cover some basics of how these uh, objects are set out. So if we select the two uh, true false switch, we can go into the attributes inspector. So you can see over here we have uh, a title, which is this title, the number of lines our title can take up, uh, the color of the body, the font, uh, minimum size, and of course layouts. Um, and up the top we have the default value, which is either on, true, off, false. So that's just the properties of the switch. The properties of the slider are a little bit more complicated. Again, um, again we have the position, the uh, visibility, the color. And as you can see, we have all these unique slider properties. So this maximum and minimum value is sort of the range of the slider. What it goes from, where it goes to. Uh, the steps is the number of components. As you can see, the slider is made up of individual components. The number of components that the slider is divvied up into. And of course, in the number of times you'd have to click the plus or the negative button to go from the minimum to the maximum. And finally, the value is sort of the default value. As you can see, it's set two. There's a two here. It's the default value that the set the uh, slider is set to when the uh, when the app starts. Now, I already have an application started setting up a little file here. As you can see, I have a switched, a slid, and a pressed for the switch slider and the button. And I'm just going to connect a couple of outlets here. So. Now, the first thing you'd probably do is call this switch. Uh, you can't switch as a, reser a reserved word for the switch um, conditional in watch in um, Swift. So you're gonna have to call it something else. You should be calling it something else anyways. So switch outlet. I'm just gonna call it for now. As you can see, we can get our WK switch. We can see some of the functions it has. It has a set title, it has set attributed text, uh, pretty default things. And then we have three other things. So we have set enabled. Using this, we can um, disable the button, it turns it sort of gray, you can't use it anymore, the user can't interact with it, they can't change it. Uh, we set have set on. You can use this to set it, the uh, switch to either true or false, passing a Boolean. And of course, set color, which of course just sets the color. Now we're going to connect the slider. So we're just going to do control drag. And let's keep our naming convention going. Uh, and we can just command click. And again, we have enabled. We have the value, which of course sets the current value, as in the number of little spaces that are filled in. Um, we have the set number of steps, which of course sets the number of divvies up you have in your slider. Uh, there is no value, there is no function to set the maximum and the minimum in code. Okay, so let's talk about these two outlets. Of course you create these outlets, just command drag, create outlet, and they pass the current value of the object because you can't just call on the object to get its current value. You have to instead, um, the, UI instead the UI instead calls an action when the value is changed and you have to uh, store it itself. So something you might use is you might use a, um, so if you want to be able to access the current value sort of outside of these actions, you can uh, use a, high level variable, so you could use a fair um, switch current. I'm not going to cover that. It's you know, pretty simple, high level variables and stuff like that. Um, so of course, when the switch is changed, we're passed a boolean, the name value, with the current value, print, and we can get our value there. Um, we can, of course, from the slider, we get a float because you know, uh, sometimes the range not, might not perfectly divide into the steps, so you can get decimals, so you need a float, so print and value. And uh, as you can see down here at the bottom, finally I have a 
pressed action connected to my button. And I'm just going to use this to show you how to, uh, let's say, use the set disabled thing. So we're going to go set, uh, we're going to go uh, switch outlet dot set enabled uh, false, which of course will disable it. Uh, then we're going to go slider, oop, slider outlet dot set enabled and false. Of course, if you want to reverse this, you can put another button where you set them to true. So let's run our app and I'll show you how all this works, what the result we get out of it is. Okay, so here we have our app. We can turn our switch on. And down in the terminal, I have to turn. So down here in the console, we can see it prints true. Turn it off, it prints false. We can turn up this button, turn it down a bit, turn it up again. As you can see, we have the numbers in a float with a boolean, on the, uh, sorry, as a float with a uh, decimal on the end. Um, and then we can press a button and uh, disable all of this. So the next video in this series is about uh, date, is about the date and the timer uh, elements that let you display a timer without having to update the screen every so often and display the date in a really friendly and easy to use way. So that's the next video and it should be up soon.